Hello everybody, Danny back from Deep South Homestead. Guys, today is the big day for us here. Uh, as you all know, those of you who follow us, we had uh, purchased uh, two pigs from Buddy Farms, which is, um, you find him on Facebook. Uh, he lives not far from us here in uh, Stone County, uh, Mississippi. And uh, just a big shout out to him right quick because he does raise pigs if you're interested in getting a pig or something butchered or something like that. He does sell pigs for butchering and things of that nature. We just want to give, give him that shout out. His name is Joseph Miley. Uh, we got two small males from him. They were cut. Uh, they were Berkshire Cross. Around 30, 35 pounds, I guess, each. We brought them home, put them in our pen. We kept them for four more months, raised them up. This one here, we've only butchered one of them so far. This one, dressed out at 180 pounds. Now this, what we have here today, is the leaf lard, or some people call it kidney fat, leaf fat, kidney fat, uh, whichever one of them terms you want to use is what we have here. Now this is your more uh, delicate lard. This is what you will use to uh, for pastries and pies and cakes and stuff like that, pie fillings and those types of things is what you use this to make uh, this with. Now, I've cut this up into mostly pretty uniform pieces, about one inch square, maybe three quarter by one inch, and maybe an inch and a quarter by, you know, by inch and a quarter. But they're predominantly, most of them are about the same size. And you want that when you're rendering out lard. You don't want big old giant pieces and little old pieces and stuff like this because what happens is you never really get them to render out like they're supposed to. Now, there's a lot of people out there that will say, oh, if you'll take this and you'll run it through a meat grinder, it'll do it in half the time. And I'm not going to argue with that because I've done it. And yes, that's true. But what I'm looking for out of this is the cracklings. That's what I want afterwards. Now, there's a big misconception out there in the world that cracklings come from pig skins. That is not true. I've raised pigs my whole life. I've rendered lard my whole life. Cracklings do not come from pig skin. Cracklings come from when you render lard out of the fat from the pig is where cracklings come from. Pig skins is where pork skins come from. Now we have a video that we can put in the link up above that will show you a video where I show making pork skins out of the skin off of a pig. Because that's what they're that's what that's used for. Don't let people, you know, fool you into thinking that the pork skin is where you get cracklings from. Now we're going to take this here. Now this is a very important step right here. If you overdo this, you're going to mess up. We've got one quarter of a cup of water right here. Now you don't want for this amount any more than one quarter of a cup put in the bottom of that cast iron. Now one thing is we only render lard about once every two to three years because we just don't use it that fast. Even though it's the only source of oil that we use here at our homestead mostly. Now we will use some olive oil occasionally, but predominantly for cooking, what we use is the, is the lard that we render from our pigs. Now this is a jar of the lard. A lot of people say that lard won't last very long if it's done this way. Now this jar right here, I'm going to show you the date on it. Get it where the light hits it, right? Okay, August the 17th, 2019. Guys, I still have several jars of this lard left, and it is perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. We use it every day. It's not rancid. It's not strong. It's none of these things. It's just that since 2019, we've not made any more lard because we didn't need to. We made so much at that time, there was no need to make any more. So... We still have several jars of this left, but we figure now is the time with everything coming down in the economy like it is for us to go ahead and do another two to three year supply. Now this is not going to be a two to three year supply, but we still have another pig to butcher and we're going to even get more fat out of it than we got out of this one. We had a lot of the fat out of this one added into uh, the pork sausage and the, uh, the ground pork that we had made with it because we knew we had two pigs and we were just only going to use one mainly for the lard. So what we're gonna do here is, I get stood up here. All right, we've got our quarter of a cup of water in here. Now we're gonna take this 
And I'm gonna just have to use my hands here. We're gonna just put our, our uh, fat over in here till we get down to a certain point. Now guys, a lot of this was frozen just a few minutes ago and I've had to work like a Trojan horse to get it cut up, but it's thawing out pretty fast. And so one thing about lard or fat, should I say, it thaws out real quick like. Now I'm gonna see if I can hold this up and get this where I can just rake it off in here now. Now it's gonna render down. That's one thing about it. Don't let it freak you out if it looks like you got a lot in there. It'll go down to a lot, trust me. It's gonna go down a whole lot. Now I will, uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna leave some of this in the bowl so that uh, as it begins to render down, I will put the rest of this in on top of it. Now, we're gonna turn this uh, back burner on high here for just a few minutes to get it kind of started. Let the water get hot. Guys, it's a rainy day outside today and that is uh, what we do on rainy days is things like this right here. Guys, all the lard washed off my hands. It was really dry, but because we have so many viewers that are so disease and germ conscious, I'm gonna just put a little soap on my hands just so y'all don't get all upset. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't put some more of this in here, guys. I just, you can hear that water on the bottom starting to boil. Now, the reason we put that little bit of water in there is so that we kind of get this fat to, to cooking out a little bit. The reason you don't want too much water in there is that it's really, really hard to cook that water out of this fat. And that's where you'll ruin your lard at a lot of times is you'll have that water will still be in there if you put too much water in it. All right, I'm gonna kind of kill this back just a little bit so we can kind of get some rendering going here. Now that we've got this hot, you can see the water trying to evaporate there a little bit out of it. Now there is some moisture in the pork because it was frozen. There's gonna be some ice crystals in it that's going to uh, put a little bit of moisture in there. See that come out of there? We're gonna let it kind of calm down a little bit now that we got it hot. And we'll turn it back up in a few minutes once it gets a little bit of grease in the bottom of it there. But Guys, this is what your original soap was actually made out of. They would take the ashes out of a, the hardwood ashes now, out of a fireplace and they would run it through a process in a barrel, putting water in it, and they would leach the lye out of it, and the lye was then mixed in with the pork fat once it was uh, rendered to actually make soap out of it. Now we've done that process, or I have, I've actually done that process before. And um, pork fat makes a really white soap. If you use beef, and now beef fat's not called beef fat, it's called tallow. If you use beef tallow, it makes kind of a dark colored, uh, a darker colored soap. It won't be white like lard will. It'll be a dark, uh, kind of an off-white or a beige color is what it'll be. And, and it's just not, it's not as desirable for people as pork fat was back in the old days. All right, guys, we're about five minutes in. And we're going to uh, see if we can't start pulling some of the stuff from the bottom up and you'll notice how it's starting to change colors we can get some of them up where you can see them here well, here's a couple of them right here that one there see how it's beginning to change colors it's just like cooking you know pork chops or anything else you'll notice how it begins to turn colors see the brown all this brown in it there we're gonna start bringing that up plus it gets gooey it does it starts getting real gooey you see the difference in the colors of it there Plus it gets real jiggly like. See how it's like jello? You start to smell it now. Guys, this pig was a male and he was cut. And uh, the smell, when I say the smell of pork, now this is not a bad smell. It's, a, it's actually a sweet smell that we're smelling here. 
He's already lowered, already rendering out. Look how much this pot's done went down on me. Already. Less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes. And I'm running about, about seven on here. This particular stove, now all stoves may be different. Beauty of cast iron. That's the beauty of cast iron, that's right. And this is an enamel coated is that enamel? Yeah, that's an enamel coated. Enamel coated inside and out. Dutch cast oven. Iron. Yeah, Dutch oven cast iron. Yeah, there's already a good bit of lard done starting to come out of this because I'm done gone down. A couple of inches. A couple of inches already in this pot. Well, guys, one of the things I do, see, you can't walk off and leave this. As hot as I'm running it, I have to be able to turn it pretty constantly here until I get it going. But what I do is, I sit here like on my porch time video, and I, what I do is I'll sit here and go through the comments and I'll answer them or give them a heart or or I'll just ban them or whatever I need to do while I'm sitting here. I actually like to kill two birds with one stone. But right now, uh, I can tell this is about ready to see if we can't make another. Pulling up some more from the bottom. Trying to be a little careful with it. Mainly because Miss Wanda don't want this all over her stove. Yeah, we don't want to get fat everywhere. Can you see it down in there? See how much? You see it down in there? It's already starting to already starting to render out. What this does also by moving it around a little bit like this in the beginning is these pieces of fat are already pretty hot. It gets the heat all up through the fat everywhere. And you're not only rendering what's on the very bottom, you're technically getting, you're heating all this fat up in here and it's starting to, see how glittery looking it is? It's kind of real shiny looking. That's the fat already trying to come out of it. When I pull it up like this, there's steam coming out of the back of this. Steam is not fat. Steam is water. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to cook any moisture out of this also, any water that's in it, because, uh, you know, pig fat has, has water in it too, just like it does lard. And we're trying to cook the water out as we're cooking the lard. That's the secret to truly good lard. When you get this down to just pure lard and all the moisture's gone out of it, it's, it tends to hold a lot better. Well, guys, it's... Um, as you can see here, this is what we're looking at now. While the fat is beginning to render down, we got a good little uh, rolling boil going here. I moved the uh, dial down to just about, not medium is what I would call it. We've got the little bubbles on top now. That's what you're looking for. It's not cooking too hard, not no risk of scorching like that. And look how much those pieces have shrunk down a lot of them. A lot of them are little bitty pieces now. They're not big like they were. And the smell is fresh. Oh, the smell is, uh, it's just, it's hard to get anybody to understand what that smell is like. I know, they're used to that crappy, yucky, store-bought store smell. smell that you get that You get that same smell when you cook beef from a store, too. Yes. It, it smells horrible. This home, does not smell like no, that. No, this does not smell like that. Our store, our home-raised beef doesn't smell like that when we're cooking it. It smells, it's a sweet smell. Tastes totally different, too. Totally different. I mean... You guys don't know what you're missing when you oh, buy in the store. Man, ain't that the truth? I mean, look at I, what I'm waiting on when this is finished is them cracklings. Oh yeah. Okay, guys, it's not bubbling like it was, so I think we're getting pretty close. And when I rake the the the, the ladle through it here, you can hear. You can tell they're taking on a dry texture to them, like a, like a baked. They're crunchy more yeah. than. They're getting kind of soft. Bit, yeah, they're not. They're not mushy like they was. Um, there's a few of them that still got a little ways to go. All right, guys. This is some of our supplies that we'll be using here. We have our stainless steel funnel. We have a coffee filter in the top of it to catch any debris going down into the lard. We will be using uh, two of the four uh, jar canning lids. 
and we will be using some ball canning lids. We're experimenting with both to see. We know the ball will do good, but we want to check the four jars out to see how well they hold up with the canning lard also under the extreme heat of lard. And we also have over to the side over here, we have a colander and a stainless steel bowl and there'll be a ladle there behind it. This will be to press our cracklings with because when you take the cracklings out of the rendered down lard, they need to be pressed in order to force any additional uh, lard out of them. And you wanna make sure you always use steel. Don't use any plastic on anything. And guys, these have just about stopped simmering, so they're almost at the point. In the oven here, we have preheated the oven to 170 degrees, which is our low setting. We have our canning jars sitting in there, getting them good and warm. You don't want to put that hot grease into a cold jar because you run the risk of it exploding on you if you do that. So we're almost there, guys. Well, we're to that point. Almost all the simmering has stopped and we still have it set on the same setting on the stove. That's my sign that, that I'm there. And we have a ladle here that, uh, or I might say a spatula that lets the grease drain through it. And we're gonna be moving these over to here. Now you don't wanna do a large amount of these at any one given time. You wanna make sure you just do a small amount of them at a time. A stainless ladle. Now understand everything we're using is stainless except the colander. And this stuff will get very, very hot. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna hold this where I can, I like to press mine down and get as much out as I can. Now, you have to kind of move with this pretty quick because when you take them cracklings out, they start getting hard pretty quick and you're not gonna press much out of them once they start getting hard. All right, we're done press these now. We're just gonna kind of spread them out on some paper towels there. Oh, I see Miss Wonder. They ain't got no salt on them yet, so. They're good without salt. I mean, I, they need salt. We will when we get through, we'll salt them. Mm. What do you think? They're good without salt. They're good without salt? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta give them one a try. Mmm. It's good without salt, ain't it? <laughs> Man. You know how to salt it. It'd be better with salt, but I'm going to tell you what. It's awesome. It tastes really good. It's really awesome. You can make yourself sick on that. I know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down. I want it to stay hot, but I'm going to cut it down a little bit. That will turn solid pretty fast. Pretty fast if it's cool. So we don't have to be added back. Yeah, we'll add it back. What's your first thing to make out of these cracklings? Ooh, we're gonna take some of that home ground cornmeal that we raised and ground ourselves, and we're gonna make ourselves some crackling cornbread. All right, guys, this is all of our cracklings we got here. Now time to sprinkle a little sea salt over these. Miss Wanda's gonna throw some in the air fryer for future use. Just yes. eat. We're gonna set this over to the side now. Get out of the way. It's That's gonna it, it will continue to dry as we set it out. Now we're gonna see how close we actually came with our uh, our cooking. This is how you know how close you got with your cooking. I'll we'll turn this back up just a little bit. Based on the amount of oil there is in here, mm. I think we did pretty good. Less than a cup. Less than a cup of oil, so that means we've got them almost perfect. And this over to the sink. Now we're going to take this and we're going to pour it right back over into that. Not going to worry with it because we don't want it to be a different temperature than the other oil. I'm having to try to see if I can figure out a way Slide to get, it forward if you need pick to. Pick these jars up one by one. Now them jars are hot. This grease is hot, so just be very careful when you're doing this, because this grease, if it gets on you, it will burn you. And keep a pot holder handy because yes. the funnel will get hot. Remember, this is a coffee filter, and it's not going to go real fast. Mm. 
watch your coffee folks because it will try to go down in there yeah you just gotta improvise there you know we figured clothes pins would be the best way to keep that from moving around that is pretty I say when you get over half the jar, you want to be careful that you don't put too much in there because if it starts running over, you can't stop it and this is some hot oil. So you got to kind of gauge it. We'll probably change filters with every jar. I can see that. Okay, we've got this done. Now you don't want to use a, uh, a wet paper towel because you don't want any water on this. You want to use a dry one because a dry one will suck up any of that oil that's on that. Now we're gonna take the four jars, and we're gonna put it on there. And we're gonna get a ring. And I'm gonna have to use a, these are very, very hot. Now, that is, I mean, it's just pure, clear. And when this cools off, this should be snow white. Okay, this is a regular Atlas Mason jar. We're gonna put the four jar on it now. We're trying the four jar lids on different types of jars, just to be sure. We can get this up. Ooh, that's gonna be so pretty. Look at that. Okay, guys, we have completely finished. We ended up with seven pints of lard. Uh, this is leaf lard. And man, does it look good. It's almost, I mean, it's almost completely clear. If you could look at it in the right way, it would look really clear. This is one of the ways I'm telling you. This is what we had left over. We're going to put this in this little bowl and keep it. We're going to use this to make some good old homemade biscuits out of. And maybe if we had enough for something else, a little cornbread or something. But then this is our cracklings. We're going to be using it for cornbread. Now, this is the crumbs that was left in the bottom. We went ahead and pressed them. Put them over in here. We're going to dump them in the cornbread when we get ready to make it. So guys, I hope that uh, us making the video today about homemade and home rendered lard uh, will be educational for you and you will have learned a little bit of something. Now we will take in the uh, uh, cards up above here. We will link some videos. You can go and watch our other videos of rendering lard and making uh, cracklings and making pork skins and stuff like that. We'll go ahead and link them up here in the cards so that you can uh, enjoy the whole process of actually working with the fat from a pig. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. Four jars. These are lids that we were sent to try. They come in regular and wide mouth. You get 50 in one, or the tall ones are 100 lids. There's a link in the description below, but on top of the lard, I canned black-eyed peas the 15th of January, and they are still sealed. We vacuum sealed oatmeal. And I do leave the rings on the oatmeal, but they are still all sealed. We had 100% seal with all the lids we've used so far. Now we'll check the lard in a little while and see if they sealed, but four jars. Check out the link in the description. Well, guys, all of our lard is completely uh, solidified now. It uh, doesn't shake anymore. We've taken the rings off. It's the next day. Uh, technically, the four jars lids actually sealed before the ball did. Uh, we were kind of amazed at that while they were sealing. Um, so it looks like that's going to be a win-win for us. Uh, so far, we're going to add them to our other stash over here. We're keeping our four jars stuff over here so that we can kind of keep an eye on uh, the different 
ways of processing using the four jars lids and um, I believe that so far it looks like they're gonna they're gonna work out all right now we'll probably we'll move these two over there to go with those and we actually tried a uh, a jar like you would can tomatoes in um, and then we tried like a uh, like a ball type jar a mason jar like you would pressure can in now this is a water bath jar this is a pressure can jar so we did both of them just to kind of see if there was going to be any differences in it and it looks like they're both going to work out really good so this is our first haul of lard um, when we do our next pig we'll probably have a whole lot more than this because we're going to try to come up with more lard to help us to make it on through the upcoming years so and guys don't let the fact that people say that lard is a bad deal lard is not bad for you that was a marketing propaganda by the medical field years ago to get people away from good healthy fats in their diet and try to get them to take the stuff out of their diets that ain't any good like cholesterol and stuff like that like chicken eggs they told you chicken eggs wasn't any good for you people's been living on chicken eggs since the beginning of time there's nothing wrong with eating chicken eggs your body needs cholesterol what's killing people today is stress and cortisol which turns into fat in the system so don't let this freak you out it's actually very healthy for you okay guys one thing i do want to mention uh do not buy lard from the store and use it to cook with hydro i can't see it through the phone but it's hydrogenated oil bha propyl gallate citric acid added to help protect flavor and it's from conagra and it's from conagra yes anytime you see anything from conagra run if don't put that in your body uh, the only reason we have this, and we bought this years ago. You can tell it's dirty. Yeah, you can tell it's been sitting in the shop. Uh, the only reason we have this is for our cast iron wood stove in the shop. We use it at the end of the season. We go ahead and reseason our wood stove in the shop so that it don't rust over the summertime. This is not made, I don't care what anybody says, this is not made for human consumption. Guys, we're going to continue to use the four jars lids, both wide mouth and regular mouth, as we go through the canning season this year. And uh, I, would, I would encourage people, now is the time to start stocking up on your jar lids and rings and stuff like that, and jars if you don't have them. Now is the time to get them, because it, they may not be available. I've had several people send me messages and tell me that they have seen this kind of stuff in the stores now. And guys, if you plan on surviving what's coming, get all you can get. 